Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Oscar Bevis for IFL TV. Dave, it's good to see you, my man. And at a normal time during the day as well. Not a two o'clock in the morning job. Um, yeah, how are we? Yeah, very well, thank you. Yeah, busy this week. Got Stevie Watch for the European silver title. Joe in his 12th fight. I've not slept for three days. My eldest is, uh, she's uh, not sure what the correct word is. Twat, maybe. <laughs> yeah, she's a naughty little twat. So, uh, yeah, just... Yeah, busy, mate. To be honest, I'm boxing myself in eight weeks. It's just all going off, to be honest. Yeah, knackered. Yeah, we've got quite a bit to uh, talk about. First off, Stevie calling you the best trainer in the world. For Stevie Levy, I agree, yeah. I don't think anyone else would pull up with her, to be honest. Um, for me, you know, like, good trainers. There's lots of good trainers. Um, but for me, it's like the right trainer for the right fighter. I, I work with loads of world-class boxing trainers. But they weren't all right for me. They weren't all. I didn't see them all as good trainers because they weren't the right trainer for me. If that makes sense, you the, you, you come across a few people and it and it works. It clicks. The way you do things work, and more than just the way you do things. Like Jamie Moore for me, we not everyone fights together when I got beat, but he was the he was the he was the best trainer I had for me. You know, put an arm around me when I needed it. You know, got he made me work hard and had a lot of respect for him. And for for that reason, he was the, he was the best for me. You know, and others, and it, you know, you see, you see loads of training the fight relationships. It it just works. So, for me and Stevie, me and Joe, that that's the case. So, I'm the best trainer in the world for Stevie Levy. Yes. Yeah. 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 I suppose that does make kind of sense. Not everyone would be kind of perfect with an Emmanuel Stewart type in their in their corner. Um, and a big night for her in the sense that the European silver belt brings with it. I guess the you kind of granted the chance to fight for the full European belt in the future and kind of ticking into the stage now where she's going to be in big fights. Yeah, it's massive really. When I met her, I met her years ago on a, just, on a, just, just met her, just, um, not, nothing to do with boxing. Do you know what it's I mean? like you don't even remember how you met her. Yeah. Just kind of just saw her. She's just, she just, she just was there and then she hasn't, she hasn't fucked off since. So, uh, <laughs> very, so yeah, we, we were just really good friends and then, um, and then she thought, oh, I need a train, I need a manager. I said, oh, I said, I'll do it if you want. And then, uh, and then she thought, oh, I'm about to European title in four weeks. Well, I knew that because I was a manager. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I sat down. I said, so right, I'll do it last three weeks. We'll have a go. Anyway, so the last show you was there, Joe boxed and won. Calvin had an amateur fight, won. I thought, fucking hell, buzzing two from two for a weekend. I thought, I'm going to go to fucking Poland now. I want to see if he boxed with the European title. I weren't looking forward to it because he was good. And Stevie, uh, it was, it was, I didn't think she was up to that level. Anyway, I went to Poland, fucking had a right go at it and boxed great. And I thought, wow. So look, get home, have a little rest, and let's get back in the gym because you're capable of doing things if we work hard and uh, you know we can get that improvement out of you. Because I didn't, I, the talent, I didn't see it to be honest. But then as soon as you start showing her a few things, I thought, fucking hell, she's not even that bad. And uh, she's done amazing sparring and stuff in the last six, seven weeks. And uh, yeah, she's got a, she's got a chance, you know. Yeah, so uh, so yeah, everything everything's going well. She wins, great. But like I say, as a trainer, me as a boxer, like my time in the limelight and my um, any accolades I will get, I should be as a fighter. As a trainer, it's like I train them. Do you know what I mean? I'm the trainer. What are you asking me questions for? It's about them. So because I've been a fighter, trainers get too much airtime and talk too much bollocks. It's the fighters, so. I wanted to win for her. I wanted. I, I wanted. To, I, do you know what I mean? Yeah. For her, it's all about her. So I just hope she can do what, she, what she's capable of, and I think she'll win. Yeah. 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 Well, she's mad as a hatter most of the time. So yeah. if she's to sit there with that European silver, I can't imagine what she's actually going to be like. You said trainers get too much airtime, but you're not just a trainer. You're now. Well, not yet. You're closing in on becoming. I say a fighter again. Um, the fighter never leaves you. But is it April the ninth? April, uh, it's in April, it's yeah. early April. <laughs> it's the first or second April in, uh, no, it's fucking hell. The first or, I think it's the first Saturday in April. Uh, it's not that far away, really. You know what, you know when I said, yeah, I said that date's good, yeah. So anyway, I go back to my missus, so I'm going to box April 6th, when I say eight weeks away, no, no, it's not, it's about 15 weeks away. Anyway, you get the calendar, I said, fucking hell, I said it's eight weeks away, that's mad. And I thought, fucking hell, I'm not like ready in eight weeks, because I'm fat as fuck. And... I will be, yeah. I'm going to have to lose two stone. But I need to lose two stone anyway. I can hardly get up the stairs. So I started training Monday. Um, it won't be nothing groundbreaking. I'll probably sell 30 or 40 tickets. I have to probably pay a few quid myself to box. But um, 
I love it, yes, I love it. And I watched Wardley and Clark earlier. Fraser Clark, he boxed for the British Heavyweight title. I took him six rounds after four years out. It was a piece of piss, really. So, not that he's not a good fighter, but if that's British title standard, do you know what I mean? If I'd have had, so I'd, people say, oh, you've got nothing left, this and that. He boxed for the British title, and I just took him six rounds with my eyes shut, basically. But I feel like there's always been this narrative with you that there's kind of two ways you could go about things. You could either do a couple of quick fights yep. and then jump straight into a big fight, yep. or there's always been the feeling that if you were to just kind of sit down or someone was to sit down with you and perfectly plan things out, then you might be standing there with yeah. a British, a Commonwealth, a European. You know what? It's just never worked that way. I've been so lucky. Finan financially, it's been amazing. Yeah. I've had like a seven-figure career. Can you? But that's amazing. Like, and not only financially, I, I boxed on this stadium in this football ground, boxed on this pitch, headline the O2. So when I stand here and go, I've been unfortunate a few times, it, it's, it probably rubs people the wrong way, but in a way, earned loads of money, done loads of great things, but my career's been a fucking shit show from start to finish. Do you know what I mean? Thrown in the deep end. I wouldn't say shit show, it's just been a bit messy. It's been, uh, I've been awfully managed, really. Um, a lot of it my own fault, because I was very headstrong when I was younger. I wanted the white fight, wanted the Ortiz fight, but... Um, I was poorly managed. I was a bit of an idiot myself. But um but like I said, I've got I've got no regrets. But I've got plenty left. People are always like got nothing left. What do you mean? I've just bought an Olympic bronze medalist after more or less four years out and we're never in any trouble. I mean yeah, but it, I've got nothing good to say about that fight. I've got nothing good to say. And my mum used to say to me, if you ain't got nothing good to say, they don't say nothing at all. So I ain't got no comment to make on it other than I've got plenty left. If he's the, if he's one of the best ever in Britain, fucking hell. Then, do you know what I mean? After four years out, nowhere near hundred percent. I can hold my own. I'm never gonna. I want to. I will always struggle to win fights because I don't throw many punches. But I can still compete at that level, and I can. I'm a I'm a natural survivor, really. Tough and and a very clever boxer, really, and not even as tough as people think. I'm just clever. But um, I've got plenty left. And people don't think I have. I'm not really bothered because, you know, the Yoka fight, everyone said, you need to stop now. You know, everyone said to me to stop after the Yoka fight, right? If I'd have stopped after the Yoka fight, I'd have earned probably 800 grand less than I did in the five years that followed. I'd have never headlined the O2. I wouldn't be training the managing fighters. I'd have, been, I'd have been on a building site the last five years. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I'd much rather have the life I've had, to be honest. So people say, oh, stop now. Who should say the next five years I'm not going to go and chin somebody like, like a Nick Webb again and just get the ball rolling again? I'm more than capable. Um, but I get a lot of stick and a lot of it's warranted because I've fucked about all my career and not trained properly. So the, the stick is warranted, but in terms of you need to start, why? Why? This is how I earn a living. And I earn a good one as well. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've only boxed once in the last four years and I've earned more of them in that one night against Razor Clark than I would have been the four years doing the job I was doing before I was boxing. So, do you know what I mean? And I'm and, I, and people think I'm daft and uh, punch drunk, and I'm very switched on. So, so it is what it is. I'm not really bothered. I'm a bit old. I don't really care what anyone says. Would it be a bit of a two fingers to those people if in the next two, three years you're to have some form of success, be it I know, any type of title, land yourself one of the big, big fights again, a headline fight? Would it be a little bit of a two fingers or are you just one of them people who don't really care? I mean, yeah, I mean, it would be nice, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know when I, when I boxed Brown at the O2? You've got people in mind that like, be it other boxers or people who've said something that you kind of just like to go, you know what? Yeah. If, if you were to have that. A few, yeah, you know, Sunday, uh, I watched an interview on Sunday. I'm not going to say who the boxer was. I watched an interview on Sunday. Recent? Yeah, re this Sunday. I watched an interview on Sunday and uh, I put my running shoes on and I thought, fuck you. And I went for a run and uh, Monday morning I woke up and I was so pissed off. So I went for another run. I walk, I walked a lot of it. <laughs> and then Monday night, I put my boxing gloves on and I thought, you know what, fuck you. So while I'd love to go, now I'm not bothered what anyone thinks. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to go, you know what, fuck you. Some promoters as well. Don't know, you, don't, you don't believe me anymore. Fuck you, I'm back. I've done it before, I'll do it again. Eventually I get sparked out and go, right, you're right, I couldn't do it this time. <laughs> But I'm one of them annoying people, like, I do things. Yeah. Do you know, people always go, oh, but 
like my trainer's license, my manager's license. I got the trainer's license. I got the manager's license. When I got trained fighters, at 30 years old, I was in, I was the head trainer in the European title fight. So I'm one of the annoying people that does things. I just go and do things. Do you know what I mean? I'm not the best at anything at all, but I'm the best at just fucking turning up averagely all the time. That's what I do. Um, so hopefully people don't take that the wrong way. I'm not being big headed at all because I'm not good at anything. Apart from fucking just being there at all fucking times. I'm here. Do you know what I mean? I'm just always here. I'm always there. I'm always I'm always putting in a little bit of effort. <laughs> it's never 100%, but you fucking better believe it. I'm here. I'm here. And I'm doing it, so I will get another big fight. I know for a fact I will, because I won't stop till I do. Um, I passed 13 brain scans as well, by the way. <laughs> so I'd put that in there. So um, I'm just having a good time, mate, to be honest. My life is fucking amazing. Amazing. Um, I box because I don't need to box anymore, but I box because I still want to. That's the honest truth as well. I don't need to box at all. Not because I'm financially independent of, and, and not have to box again. I can do other things, but uh, I fucking love boxing. And I know I've still got something left. And uh, I'll never show how good I really can be because I never will be asked to give 100%. But I'll give you fucking 85% at some point and someone's in big trouble. So I just want to make people, I just want to make people laugh and I just want to... Um, so I'm people happy and just keep turning up and and just just keep trying. Do you know what I mean? Just keep trying. That's all I'm about, really. Just 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 trying a little bit. Yeah. Well, everyone's got their seven way there, and I don't think yours is uh, yours is a long 31. way. Yours is yours is a long way off. I'm 31. Like I'm not, I've been around forever. So you were talking about when people were saying, "Oh, uh, telling you that you should pack it in." 26. This is when you were in your yeah, you were in your in your twenties. Yeah. I was 26. Um, I just, a lot of people just see a heavyweight, see a defeat, see a fight where you've taken a couple of punches and go, oh, it's prob- probably time to pack it in now. The Fraser Clark fight wasn't a hard fight at all. I think I got caught with like two clean punches the whole fight. And you know when I pulled that in the corner, looking back now, I'm ashamed of myself really because it was a very cowardly thing to do. Um, I wasn't I wasn't like in any trouble. He would have got disqualified if I carried on as well. Looking back, looking at me wardly, take the press conference, I thought, fuck me. I would have just stuck in there for another couple of rounds. It got chucked out. I didn't want to win like that, but it would have got chucked out. I was looking to him, I thought, that could be me sat there if I just fucking stood in the ring and got in the balls a couple more times. But again, I, do you know what it is? I don't like I don't like talking on the interviews and saying, I'm not saying anything negative about any of them. Just, um, just life's funny, isn't it? I just want, it's just, I just want to be, I just want to do my thing. Do you know what I mean? And, and uh, in by doing my thing, I, I, help, I feel like I, I'm helping other people do their thing. Definitely Joe and Stevie and a few others, even if there's no one beyond that. So I just fucking chatting shit because I've not slept for like 72 hours. I just, I just want everyone to be happy, really. If everyone, if everyone liked me as well, that'd be a nice bonus. But I know they don't, and I'm, I'm all right. I'm better with that than I used to be. So yeah, fucking shut up, David. Mate, we love you. Don't worry. Um, you mentioned. Uh, Fraser, you see him and Fabio have have a little bit uh, of verbals. You can see there's a bit of respect there between the two. Um, how does that fight go for you? I think it's difficult because you know uh, I've been watching loads of interviews like Dave Allen and Mary's back. The shit. That's that's fair enough. That's your opinion. And we're not exciting. We're not. We're both pretty slow and fat and ponderous. But we're very awkward. Super awkward. I know I'm awkward. Like I'm horrible. I would hate to box me. Someone rung me, someone would want to box Dave Allen. I'd be like, not really, because he's gonna make me look shit. Because that's what he does. Do you know what I mean? And if he hits me on the chin, I want to go over. If he doesn't, I want to win every round on points. Which is a horrible fight. Marius Vak horrible as well. He's fucking huge. I met Marius fucking Poland. I'm like, what the fuck? He's fucking huge. He's about eight foot tall. He came over. He came over and recognised me. And I was like, fucking hell, this Marius Vak knows me. And I shook his hand and my fucking hand got stuck in his mitt. And I was like, you're right, mate. I thought, fuck me. I meant to box me in 2020. He got offered uh, when I meant to box because Lovejoy. I think, fuck, I didn't box him. He was fucking huge. Anyway, I'm getting away from the, the topic. Yeah, we're horrible to box. So I, I think judging Fraser Clark on me and Vac would be a mistake because we're not Fabio Wardley. Fabio Wardley is on another planet in terms of dangerous than me because he punched a lot harder. He's a lot sharper and hungrier. But. He's a lot easier to hit than me. And people, again, who don't know what they're talking about, go, what the fuck are we going about? 
I'm very hard. You're not going to whip me on the chin, which is why you can watch me box all tees, white, yoke, all of them. You're not going to see me on my arse because if you want to, you're not going to whip me on the chin. I won't allow it because I know I'll go on my arse if you do, and I'm, I don't want to do that. So you're not hitting me clean. I'm not bothered how shit you think I am. Try and find some footage on my arse. You can't. Uh, so Wardley's a lot easier to hit than me and Wack. He's a lot. He's a novice, really, but he's a fucking animal. He is. He's fucking awful. I don't want to. Bother. I'm glad I bought Clark and not Wardley because Clark's not dangerous. Wardley fucking is big time. Um, in terms of the fact, I think Wardley probably flattens him. I think Wardley might be just a bit too ferocious, really. He might be too hungry and just fucking set about him. But uh, Fraser Clark outboxing him and dropping right hands in his chin and out him wouldn't surprise me either, to be honest. But in all honesty, I couldn't give a fuck, really. Either way, not bothered. I get asked loads of questions about boxing, and the older I get, who gives a fuck, really? Not, if they give me 10% of the piece, I'm, I'll come and watch. I don't, I don't have to care because you might be fighting one of these once you've got your comeback out of the way and got a couple of wins. And yeah, I'm. Uh, you never say no. The older you get, you never. You don't say nothing. It pays you. You don't say no. As soon as you have kids and you're like, Why, where's all my money going? You're like, yeah, I fucking box whoever you want. Let's say box King Kong. I've already boxed him. I don't. Know. You know what? I messaged this sort of last week and asked him for a fight. Actually, yeah, I was bored out mad and I saw him on Instagram and I messaged him said, Do you want a fight? And he put ha 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 and I thought, what's fucking funny like? <laughs> <laughs> I said, what's well, funny? You two regularly no, conversate. No, no. no fucking, I've not spoke to him in uh, in uh, seven years. <laughs> I was put on a fight. And he was like, ha, ha, ha. And I said, what's funny? And he put, no, I'm doing something else. And I thought, oh. You know, I just said, I said, I think you're old enough now for me to hit because he must be fucking 50 odd. He's probably still back. You always remember which used to crack me up is when you said that he smelled like dust. I'm, I always used to find that the funniest thing. No, no. With a hint of where his originals as well. <laughs> you know what? He's a he's a good guy. You know, he's funny. I you know what? I don't dislike anyone in the world, to be honest. But you know, interviews well, sometimes. Boxing's full of decent people, and it is. It's full of arseholes and all. But I don't dislike any of them arseholes because I understand I'm an arsehole sometimes. People probably dislike me sometimes. A lot of people dislike me when they don't know me. But uh, but um, yeah, I, I don't dislike any of them. But you know, what you can watch interviews like I watched one the other day. I was fucking raging. Do you know what I mean? You get raging, like, the f- the f- why are you talking about me like that? But, um, but it's interviews, isn't it? Like, I've said stuff in here, some people probably go, why are you saying that about me? Because I'll get flattened by a wardly, or, do you know what I mean? It's easy to do, but realistically, um, re- yeah, so, so United Leeds, I thought they were in the different, is it FA Cup? What's it FA Cup? Yeah, I don't know why there's a Sheffield United Leeds scoreboard. Up. Well, Leeds played last night in the FA Cup. So, oh, really? um, I don't know, but um, be alright if we got to stay and watch a free football match. To be fair, um, one more thing: yeah. May the eighteenth, we got the new date for um, Fury Usyk. I know that you said when we spoke after the first postponement, you weren't too sure if it was going to happen. Yeah, I'm not. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm still not sure. I just, I just well, Fury, Tyson come out today and said he's adamant that he's got this five fight plan, which includes Usyk twice, yeah, Joshua twice, and Garner again. Like. Fucking hell. I um I believe you when I see it to be honest. And furthermore, I don't really care. Again, I'm not really but I like Tyson's been a mate of mine for years, like I don't Do you know what I mean? But realistically, I don't I'm not really bothered, I don't really watch I watch I watch Miss Rachel, Peppa Pig, Sing One and Two. I don't I don't keep up with it anymore, like I used to I ain't got a fucking chance. I, I like I think we're not going over there. You mean I don't know. He's a miserable bastard, do you know what I mean? But you know, as I get older now. Are you morphing into him, is what you're going to say? Yeah, I'm like, fucking like, I'm like, I'm a miserable bastard as well. But um, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty easygoing guy, but a very miserable bastard these days as well, yeah. I just don't care anymore about anything that doesn't concern me. Is that selfish? I'm not sure. No. I just don't care. But I still think Fury will win. Because Yusuf's older than Fury, isn't it? I think people are forgetting, like, oh, Fury's getting old. Yusuf's getting older, and he's smaller. He's much, he's smaller. Um, I think Fury wins. I don't, this has been going on forever, and I was talking shit today. When do you think the first time you were asked who wins between Fury and Usyk? We must be looking at... 2020. Yeah. When I was in Ukraine. Yeah. And I was in Ukraine, and I was like, I think Usyk will win. And as soon as I got back on English soil, I was like, holy fuck. Fucking Fury Batters, isn't it? Really fuck, Rule Britannia Tyson. Is it really fuck? 
Usyk's a genius, like he's, an, he's just an amazing bloke and all. He's not my friend by any means, but yeah. he gave me his jacket actually when he came to London and bought his order. Give me his coat. I think he likes me. <laughs> I'm, the thing is, I'm just a fan, me. Like I'm just a, I'm just a, just I'm just a fucking. Do you know what I mean? I'm like you, aren't I? We're just all, I'm just like I'm just a fucking, just a bloke, aren't I? Do you know what I mean? So like, you when I met you, say even like Fury, like. You'd be like, fucking hell, that's in my, that's that box off at telly. Do you know what I mean? So that's that's why that's why I'll never win anything. Cause I ain't got that champion mindset. But I don't give a fuck because I thought, fucking look at you sitting and they give me his coat. I fucking wasn't slept in it for three nights in a row. <laughs> I didn't really. It's not good though. I give it my dad actually. He, he wears it to the shopping nights. It's it's, uh, it's sky blue and yellow. It looks like a right swat. But um, life's for living, isn't it? We just gotta. I, I just. If you are you happy? Are you happy? I'm so happy. Yeah. I'm happy, mate. To be, and I was so un, I was so unhappy for so long, and I'm just so happy now. So it's amazing, really. Yeah, just yeah. I just want peace and quiet in life, really. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I like to box as well. Would it be nice at this point in my life now? If boxing was unpaid and no one watched it, it'd be fucking amazing as well. Do you know what I mean? But I don't just want to spar because I want that buzz and all the people watching, which kind of rules out people not being there. So I'm very contradictory sometimes, but I am hyper aware of my own bullshit, which is which is something that a lot of people a lot of people aren't uh, aware of their own bullshit. So because I'm aware of the shit I spout, I think I think it's all right that I talk shit. Yeah. What do you think? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I chat shit, but I contradict myself every couple of minutes. But that's because my fucking head's a shed all over the place. Do you know what I mean? But I'm hyper. So when, but when I do it, I go fucking hell. I've just I said something the opposite two minutes ago. I look alright, twat. Now everyone's gonna think I'm a bit of a twat, but but it's too late. Well, like you said, you pass like in brain scans. It don't matter. Dave, I appreciate yeah, your time right. always, and Thank uh, you thanks for speaking to IFL TV. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Wall Street memes, casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook. <laughs>